viewers, and welcome to Late Night with Nike Oshinowo. Now, everybody who knows me knows that I have zero creative bone in my body, as in none. I can't even take a selfie. It's that bad. <laughs> but I am amazed at the, at the crop of creativity that we find all around us in Nigeria. Tonight, we're going to be talking about that type of creativity. My first guest is the celebrated photographer and painter, Kelechi Amadi Obi. I mean, I even have to say his name with reverence. It's just so magnificent. Most people don't know that Kelechi actually started out as a lawyer before going into photography. Now, we'll, we'll hear more about that. Kelechi Amadi Obi, join me, join me, join me. <laughs> it is wonderful to have you on the show. Same here. Mm -hmm. Please take a seat. I think everybody here knows how excited I am to have you on the show. Isn't this amazing? What do you think of my set? Wonderful. Because you, with your <laughs> eye, my goodness. It's a lovely set. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I thought you'd appreciate it. Yeah. Ah, don't you love the skyline? Interesting. I know. The guy who did it is such a genius. I love it. Totally love it. Welcome. Thank you. You know something? You are Nigeria's genius. Ah, you are Nigeria's genius. I keep talking about overachievers. You know, we have DJ Spinal, or who's absent today because he's stuck in Abuja. Eric, get him back to me, please. You know, so we have a DJ, DJ Spinal, who studied engineering and he's DJing and making tons of money. We have you, who studied law, and you're making all you're making all this money. By the way, ignore the way he looks. Old. This man is so, has so much money; it's ridiculous. You know, you're making all your money from first of all painting. Yes, we started with painting. You started with painting. Yes. Because I remember, because when I come into your studio, I see your art, I see your work, yes. and it is so, it's so intimate, it's so spiritual and intimate and. Ethereal, it's, it's, it's amazing. What is, I mean, what is in your head when you're there? What, what's in your head when you are actually painting? Painting is very interesting. You, um, by yourself, looking at a blank canvas, mm -hmm. and there are like a million different things you could put on that canvas, so you have to decide on what to do with it. You know when you're looking for a quiet moment as a yeah. human being to try to understand yourself? Painting does that for you. It's you struggling with yourself. It's so personal, the whole process of painting. It was, it was a lot of fun. First of all, I was making uh, photographs as mm -hmm. reference materials for my paintings. Mm -hmm. And then the, the photographs started looking very interesting because mm -hmm. I kept... I'm going to stop you there. Yes. I'm going to stop you there. By mm -hmm. the way, do you, have any, do you have anything for us to drink? Yes. What are you drinking? We have champagne, we have cognac, we have everything. Oh. He can even rustle up some water, if that's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> champagne? Do you yeah, want some? Yeah, champagne. champagne. Yeah. We have, by the way, you know, you know how I told you about once in a while? Actually, no, every week that my friends and family, our VIP guests, will be here. Well, I've got two people with us. Our two of my favorite people. Hi, Hi guys. Huh? Enjoy this with me. Yeah. Would you like drinks? Yeah, champagne? Yeah, so will you give my, my friends some champagne as well? Thank Before you. you go into that transition, to photography. Yes. I want to talk, talk about the initial, the original transition yes. from law to painting. How, how did you do that? I mean, what kind of brain goes into <laughs> studying law and then starts painting? I, I, I don't, I, yeah. Yeah. Well, the full story really mm -hmm. is that I've always been an artist, right? Okay. From primary school to secondary school, to university, I never stopped drawing. Okay. So I've always been interested in the visual yeah. arts. And um, right from childhood, luckily for me, I, I grew up next to a library. And I realized that all the wisdom of uh, past, you know, greats yeah. are left bare for us to tap from within the books. Yes. Now it's the internet, it's Google. 
But when it came to choosing a course, mm -hmm. I was in Omaha then. There was no gallery. There were no photographers. There mm. were no painters I had mm -hmm. ever met. But there I were just, lots of lawyers. Yeah, I just, mm -hmm. I just read books mm -hmm. that uh, were talking about Picasso, Leonardo mm -hmm. da Vinci, and the rest of them. They looked like very distant, you know, mythical People. creatures. You yes, know. you know. Yeah. And, and uh, I come from a family of lawyers. But yeah. when it came to choosing a course, it was natural. In my house, you, you either become a lawyer or a medical doctor in those days. Well, I think of everybody. It's, this is yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Nigeria, I hope it you was. guys aren't still doing this to your children. Please. <laughs> you know, Kalechi, that's why you're here. You're here to liberate a whole lot of Nigerians who, are, who feel, yes. you know, trapped in that little round peg or square peg or whatever. Yes. The first thing happened was that, okay, okay, you read in the book, so you have to go out there and mm -hmm. feel your subject mm -hmm. before you draw them. So I went to a Jelegba bus stop mm -hmm. with my easel and I started making a painting. And you can imagine how disastrous that could be. Of course, I mean. There was a, li a little crowd behind me mm -hmm. and everybody had something to tell me. Oh, mm -hmm. I have a brother who is an artist. Can uh -huh. you take him on? <laughs> and oh, look at that woman. She just passed. You should be drawing her. <laughs> and it was just impossible. Mm -hmm. So I realized that, okay, I have to come make a picture mm -hmm. and then go back to the studio Isn't to continue my drawing. Mm -hmm. And um, I gradually started doing that and I started getting interested in the human form mm -hmm. and started taking pictures of models. And gradually, I, the, the better the photograph, then the better the artwork. So I started learning more about photography. And after a while, I had quite a collection of pictures. Mm -hmm. And then some chap who came in from Germany, who was going to create a, a photography exhibition in, in Mali, Bamako, yeah. Mali, for Nigerian photography at the Bernal. Somebody referred him to my collection and he came, he looked at it and he said, oh, I think you, you qualify. So I found myself leaving the country for the first time as a photographer, not as an artist. Can you imagine? As yeah. a photographer? Not as a painter. Not as a painter. Yeah. And with my reference photos. And not, most certainly not as a lawyer. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you know. Most certainly not as a lawyer. Yeah. 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 No way. It's, um, yeah. yeah. So that was, that was my, that was, that was the first shocker I got mm -hmm. and I, I that was when I got when I got to Mali mm -hmm. it was a biennale of African photography mm -hmm. and it was huge it had mm -hmm. photographers curators and people come from all over Africa and then all over the world mm -hmm. and it, right there and then I got invited to Milan to have an exhibition again mm -hmm. Okay, I got back to Nigeria and I said, okay, this is a serious matter. This Abby. photography thing, I better look into it mm -hmm. more seriously. Mm -hmm. And that was how I started looking into photography mm -hmm. more seriously what while earning a living. While earning a living. As a painter. As yes. a painter. Yeah. So let's talk about success. Yes. Because you know, as much as we like to talk about you know, the arts and whatever, the fact is we're Nigerians, we celebrate success. Yes. Abby, if you weren't a successful artist, you wouldn't be here. Yes. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about success. When do you know you are successful as an artist? I see success as a process. Okay. And I also see it as in a flux. There is no, it's a journey. And there's no arrival. You know, for me... You've lost me. It's yeah. too much. It's way over my yeah, head. Like for me, Bring I, it down. Yeah, like what you would call success, uh -huh. for instance, uh -huh. what I have achieved within Nigeria yes. would mean nothing to some people, maybe in New York. So it's so relative. Okay. Yeah. So for me, I see it as, okay, good, I've achieved this. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing, the only tangible thing mm -hmm. is the present. It's me discussing with you right now and enjoying that conversation. So I make a picture, people love it, mm -hmm. I move on mm -hmm. and they make another good picture. But for me, what really matters is, did I really enjoy the process of making that picture? But in terms of success, commercial success mm -hmm. and the rest of them, there are rules. Really? There are rules of business, mm -hmm. <laughs> rules if you, if, no matter how artistic you are, mm -hmm. you must, you must be able to keep a ledger. Yes. You must be able to keep your promise yes. to your client. Yes. You must be able to exceed expectations or at least meet them. Mm -hmm. 
you know, um, you should be able to write a letter and reply one. Of a high court judge, you know. You know. So mm -hmm. for me, I do believe it's a combination mm -hmm. of not just your art, mm -hmm. but also you need to understand the rules of you know decency in business mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know integrity and things like that. They also apply. Mm -hmm. You would see some really really talented people, and then you're wondering how come. You know, they are not so successful. Yeah. You must be able to communicate your ideas. Now, talking about the next frontier, because my next guest uh, um, really is one of Afri Africa's you know, biggest photo revivalists. And um, I know you've done a collaboration. Oh, yeah. I would very much like to introduce you to Azu. Can, can you come in and join us? And then when he's sitting down. Huh? Hi, how are you? Thank Please you. take a seat. Thanks. Hmm? Yeah, you guys bond. <laughs> yes. Yes. Azu, so Azu is, um, Azu and Kaleji have done this collaboration, that, which I find phenomenal. But we're going to come back. I'm going to introduce them to you properly after this break. Okay. Welcome back to Late Night with Nikhil Shinoa. So I have with me Azu. Now, Azu does something really unique that we've all been seeing, uh, and that is you know, the, because he's the director of Lagos Photo Festival. You, uh, we all call it Lagos Photo. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. become quite the thing. You are also, um, you're a director, you're a curator, uh, and you, know, you, you are also... You're also involved in African Artists Foundation. Indeed. I'm not quite sure in what capacity, but you're a director of that too. Yes, I'm the founder, director of the, the African Artists Foundation. Yeah. What does a curator do? Um, can we describe describing uh, <laughs> how he got identified and discovered as a photographer? Yes. And that's really the job of a curator, to find talent and to promote talent and to guide. To curate. find yes. talent? Yes. But no one found Kelechi. Kelechi found Yeah, to find the work that they've done and to, to, make, to make it coherent. Because mm. Kelechi's work, you know, he's got lots of people who've seen it before, this curator who Azu, identified you it. You are those people that we see, you know, with Picasso. We see the film of Picasso. We see, you're the people, the horrible people. We can be. Yeah, <laughs> you're the ones that Picasso was always running away from, <laughs> holding his work from, Abby. Kelechi, because you know, so because the the, the the artists want to hold their work, they don't want to share it. Oh, thank you. Yes, now, and you have to persuade them to make their work commercially. Yes. Oh, well, Kelechi talked about making a drawing, mm -hmm. showing it to his classmates, showing it mm -hmm. to his friends to get the approval. That's just, just approval and that's, appreciation. That's a very basic level of um, sort of exhibiting exactly. your work. Yeah. And so you imagine showing your work to a wider audience to you know thousands mm -hmm. of thousands of people that come through the exhibition mm -hmm. door that's really the job of a curator to make a show powerful and cogent Asu, how do you go from because because you, you you're slim how do you go from almost becoming a boxer to a curator oh it's interesting well, um, because you i mean because I, I, i'd ask you to take off that jacket but you know i mean really well, you know? i like to be modest <laughs> you like to be modest so, yeah. you know so how 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 did you become a curator it's um you know one of the problems we have is the way society is structured especially in africa yeah. is such that you know middle class minded people tend towards safer careers mm -hmm. and so it's important that we begin to you know promote and identify people like Kalechi, superstars mm -hmm. like that so that our kids can you know aspire to Honestly. be more like him because mm -hmm. you know there is actually an opportunity for you to make a living you know doing something that you're passionate about not opportunity to make a living you can make a living and excel indeed, indeed. yeah absolutely uh, that's what it's all about you can only excel and truly be successful talking about success if you're doing what makes you happy you know what's behind that what's the motivation the inspiration behind that well i think you know lagos is possibly the most important city mm -hmm. in africa mm -hmm. and therefore in the world mm -hmm. and therefore we need to begin to understand that things should happen in the city that happen everywhere else yes. on all the places that we identify mm -hmm. and the main the primary motivation for me really was to begin to promote work that challenges the stereotypes that we see about 
Nigeria, about mm -hmm. Africa, the way we're represented in, you know, international media. That was my main driving force to begin to show a newer narrative and to give voices to mm -hmm. a younger generation, a new generation mm -hmm. of people that have embraced this new African sensibility, wow. rather than showing the same, you know, beggars on the street, and be, poverty, mm -hmm, deprivation, mm -hmm. disease, death, mm -hmm. displacement. Um, it was important for us to tell support. Tell our own story. Indeed, tell mm -hmm. our own story and promote a newer narrative, a narrative mm -hmm. that is empowering, not mm -hmm. propaganda, not, oh, well, we have rich, rich people. No, mm -hmm. it's really more about showing a more nuanced, more balanced yes. Um, yes. representation of Africa yes. and, of, you know, Nigeria. So all of the work that we show really relates to the continent mm -hmm. and oftentimes to um, the city mm -hmm. and sometimes just, you know, we, it's all theme based, you know. Do, is it, I mean, is the, is, is the idea to keep it within Lagos, to just keep it in Lagos or we'd, do you plan to go around the country? We'd love to. In fact, I got, um, if you've, uh, I got a phone call two weeks ago about bringing the show to Abuja mm -hmm. from one of the embassies mm -hmm. over there. They're, they're mm -hmm. interested in bringing the festival out yes. there. I mean, because Lagos Photo is actually an international photo festival. Yes, so it is. we've got artists from all over the mm -hmm. world. We've had, over the last five years, over a hundred artists come to exhibit their work from the US, from Germany, from Spain, from every, you know, all of these Western countries where the work relates to the continent. You know something? Indeed. You are so softly spoken. I mean, isn't he just the most genteel man you've ever met? It's darling. It's absolutely amazing. And I can't get over the fact that you were almost going to become a boxer. It was just a they would have killed you. I mean, they would have, like, flattered you. Are you it's, kidding? It's really all about um, our thinking, your opponent, you know. I think boxing is a bit like chess for me. I, I've always loved but you know, sport, chess and boxing, the girl. Really? Yeah, it's about anticipating the right moment to hit the strike. Because, you know, I'm like, are you kidding? What, what was it that Muhammad Ali used to say, you know, like... Fly like a bird. You know, and then I used to do the thing, you know, like, you yeah. know... <laughs> 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 it's not that thing that like yeah. I do. Uh, yeah. And Actually, then, you know... Ali was my hero growing up, so... Really? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, the, 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 I know that you have to protect your face or something. Yeah. So you have to keep your feet moving, keep protect moving. your face, keep, you know. know. It's easier to curate. Uh, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure because, you know, <laughs> artists are very difficult people to do. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like I'm in a boxing match after I'm used to the big guy, so, so yeah. Life is like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but so, you, in a place like, not just Lagos, in a country like Nigeria, mm. where really we have no design schools, We've, we don't encourage our children to go into the arts, if anything, we discourage them. How is that working for you? Well, that's why the festival is terribly important mm -hmm. because each year during the festival we have a professional week, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, an ed uh, educational week, mm -hmm. and we've always had people like Kalechi and George Sidi and a lot of Nigerian, mm -hmm. you know, icons of photography people that are really respected and you know, with a lot of talent and ability, give mm -hmm. workshops, and it's always free and it's always open to the public, mm -hmm. and it's oversubscribed. You know, so Always. we have to mm -hmm. we have to really make a very tight selection of people that can get the best from it. So it's it's proven over the last few years to be a real um, break of point for a lot of artists because mm -hmm. they, they they learn a lot from these guys over a very short period. Mm -hmm. They get a lot of confidence, mm -hmm. advice that they can take on with them to so, grow. So so you have you have a whole lot of foreigners coming in coming yes. in. Okay, you have. Nigerians who learn. Yeah, you have our own homegrown you know, superstars like Kelechi yeah. and the ones that have come after him as well. Absolutely, yes. So it truly it, it, it isn't. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a world exhibition. It's a world, it's a world phenomenon oh, yeah. that's taking place. I understand now why the international community is so, so heavily involved in it. They, they, they do feel heavily invested in that particular. I and I see now, how come you get so many sponsors? Sponsors? Now, now. Yes, I see it now. <laughs> sponsors, that's interesting. Yeah. Don't, don't you see it? I do. I'm always like, this all you have to like, do is go. So well yeah, I'm like, really, these people? Ah, no, well. I think, you know, eh? the reason is photography is really the language of our time. And I think, you know, if really? you uh, absolutely you communicate. You know something, you're right. Yeah, if you're trying He's to communicate, right. it's so easy. Selfies. Mm -hmm. That's photography. Indeed. The language of our time. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Kelechi, you're very much in touch with young Nigerians. You know, the reason I say that, 
uh, every aspiring model, every aspiring beauty queen thinks that they'll be, is, they'll, they, th they think that they'll be an Agbani, they'll be a Nikkei Oshinawa, they'll be an Oluchi if Kelechi takes their picture. Hmm? Yes. So, we had better just give them safe platforms. I, I, that's, that's what, yeah. The, the other thing mm -hmm. is that the arts, um, that's the only place where you, we, we are at par with the rest of the world. Creativity mm -hmm. is not necessarily locked down to mm -hmm. technology, mm -hmm. you know? So you, you can imagine, you can create, mm -hmm. and you're as good as the guy in Japan or mm -hmm. the guy in China. Uh, can you just hold York. that thought? Can you hold that thought and just let's take a quick break? Yeah. And we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. So, Kelechi, you're talking about technology uh, being responsible for this, huh? Is that what you're saying? No, it's the opposite, actually. Well. I mean, if you're looking at technology, it takes years to develop and put together. Uh, I would say in Africa, we're quite behind mm -hmm. in those areas. Mm -hmm. But if it's about designing sound, it's about making images, it's about mm -hmm. football, it's hmm. about... You know, all the arts. As in that really. we can do. Yeah. That, yeah. Then we can find ourselves winning the World Cup. We can yeah. find ourselves... We can compete. You know, we do have Nigerians who are way ahead also in, in, in technology, but they have to be in, in New York or somewhere. In Japan. You know, in Japan. You know, in there. But right here mm -hmm. in Africa, our people are taking over when it comes to the music. Mm -hmm. We've completely taken over Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, recolonized Africa. We've, we've recolonized Africa in terms of movies. Hmm. It's arts. You know something? So yeah. basically what you're talking about is this, you know, well, you know how I put it? I put it this, you know, like, it's a renaissance of our people, yes. our young people, yes. our, our youths, yeah. who now believe yeah. they, can, they can earn a living from living their dreams. Yep. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. And that is actually, um, uh, there. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I mean, I'm looking at it, even this program. Yeah. This program is, is telling our story. Yes. And with photography, we've taken it back, the narrative. Mm -hmm. And we're saying this is who we are. Mm -hmm. It's our story by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, it's wonderful because we are living in an age mm -hmm. where the middleman has been removed. Mm. The internet completely gives you access. Total access. Yeah. So and the middleman has been removed. Yeah. And the middle class has grown. It yes. is growing yes. and keeps growing. Yeah. And yes. that middle class, th that's the market. They're the ones who appreciate these things. Yes. They're the ones who buy. Mm. They have purchasing power. And, yes. and the opportunities mm. have been just, it's democratized. Mm. So it's, it's wonderful. Wow. Wow. I, I, I hope the audience has enjoyed this as much as I have done. I, I know that my friends have. Yes, you have. guys have been tremendous. I'm still offering you one of my children. Please. <laughs> 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 Just tell me, I will. how old do my twins have to be before they can come and start, <laughs> yeah, start learning? I mean, really, they need to do it in your house. They can't do it in my own house. No, 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 no. My house is all white. They can not have all that paint. No, no. So they need to come to you. Really? And then by the time they spend like five years uh, schooling, I'll then you can be ready. You can be ready. You can be ready. You can be ready. The end. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all next week. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah.